Welcome to PV Magazine Live. This is Christian Rosland, America's editor at PV Magazine, and we're here at the Solar Power International Trade Show in Las Vegas. I'm joined by Corey Honeyman, the associate director of U.S. Research at GTM Research. Corey, thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Yeah, thank you. How's your show going so far? Good. Busy as always, but, you know, can't complain. I imagine. So if we look broad strokes in terms of what's happening in the second half of this year in the U.S. solar market, can you give me an overview of some of the trends that you see, particularly in the utility scale sector? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think the one word to capture what's happening right now in the U.S. market is volatile, both for better and for worse. But I think you have, you know, gigawatts of larger scale projects that are still working out their construction timelines and figuring out whether they can push out completion dates into the beginning of next year instead. Residential solar is a bit of uh, a market that's kind of in transition right now where major states are beginning to slow down growth while there are a handful of emerging states that are in this boom, potentially bust cycle. And then commercial solar, you know, a lot of the problems still continue to persist. But, you know, one promising component is the emergence of community solar and a handful of states that are really beginning to take hold in the second half of this year. So to get back to a little bit to utility scale here, um, as about six months ago, I believe the GTM research's forecast for this year was 16 gigawatts. And then it fell in the, at the Q1 solar market insight, and then in the publication of the Q2 solar market insight, you brought it down again to 13.9 gigawatts. I understand a lot of this has to do with the utility scale segment. Can you talk about what's going on there and about some of the difficulties in forecasting? Yeah, you know, I think it's important to keep in mind that our forecasts, when we release them each quarter, they're a snapshot in the state of time of each of those segments. And so over the past six months, there has been continued progress with a lot of utility scale projects that have been able to actually push out their completion timelines. The reality is is that it's really different on a utility by utility basis and really on a developer by developer basis. So what we see is that a large number of the big balance sheet IPPs, whether you're looking at projects owned by, say, a Dominion or a Duke Energy Renewables or a Nextera, you know, an overwhelming, let's call it at least 75% of their pipelines remain on track to come online this year. But that long tail of developers really has been this moving target analysis to understand which particular pipelines have been able to successfully push out into next year. Interesting. So recently, when I've been talking to analysts and some large, some of the larger companies, larger developers in the U.S. industry, uh, they're saying that in the second that the pressure is off for off-takers to sign PPAs, and that they expect a, a moderate to significant disruption in the market because the ITC has been extended, and now utilities and other off-takers have years to sign PPAs. Are you seeing this phenomena? And if you are, what's this doing to the market? I think we are seeing that phenomenon, but like in a particular segment of utility scale solar. So it's really for a lot of the origination opportunities for projects that are north of 20 megawatts, especially with the investor-owned utilities, both in RPS-driven and non-RPS-driven markets. And it's you know worth keeping in mind when you look at even what we expect to come online in 2017, really only around a gigawatt and a half of that current forecast comes from projects that have been new origination opportunities over the past six to nine months. So, so much of what we even expect to support growth in 2017 still comes from spillover, north of, you know, increasingly around the the six gigawatt range. So, the one consideration to keep in mind is that what is being procured is that smaller utility scale segment. So, the likes of, you know, smaller rural co-ops and munis, also still some markets where there's some PERPA qualified facility development, those segments still continue to see some growth opportunities within the southeast and especially in the Pacific Northwest. Very interesting. That's areas that the Pacific Northwest you don't hear much about. But to go back here, you mentioned spillover. Uh, if you look at when the ITC was extended to today, what uh, capacity of utility scale projects has been pushed back that was originally slated for completion in 2016 and now will be completed in 2017 or later? Yeah. And, and one way to kind of qualify that is I think there's a lot of like top level figures that have been thrown out there. You know, our top level figure calls for about six gigawatts of projects that are spilling over from this year. And I mean, you look at what actually even came online across all segments last year, that's basically the entire U.S. market. But even within that, I think you want to look at just where the status is of a lot of these projects, right? So there's 10 gigawatts right now that's currently in construction in the utility scale market. Around four and a half to five gigawatts of that is more than 50% complete construction. And then there's another two to two and a half gigawatts that is in the 25 to 50% range that still is trying to come online this year. And another two gigawatts that's in early construction phase that is essentially given up 
to come online this year and are pushing out into next year. And on top of that, there's another four gigawatts that had initially intended to come online, online this year, but hasn't started construction at all and is pushing out into 2017. So the point being is that there's these various stages of projects within that massive utility scale pipeline, some of which have higher degrees of probability of still happening this year, as we've seen in the case in the past, in that the second half of the year is always the biggest boom. The difference is that the denominator of the utility scale pipeline is so large this time around because of that over procurement, that even when you see six gigawatts push out into next year, there's still this overwhelming pipeline of projects that have accelerated construction timelines and are still on track to happen in the second half of this year. Wow, fascinating. So, module prices. I've been hearing all over this trade show about a fall in module prices in the second half of the year. Do you see this happening? And, well, actually, it's already started, but we'll carry through the second half of the year. Do you see this happening? And what impact was, do you see this having on the, util, on the U.S. market? Sure, yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, with the U.S. market becoming that much of a bigger player, you know, emerging this year as the second largest market in the global solar industry, you know, what happens in the U.S. plays a much bigger role in influencing upstream market dynamics when it comes to module pricing. But I think you look at what's happening in the U.S. and what's happening in China right now, collectively that is creating some uh, compression in module pricing. I think the interesting thing to think about is as you see continued module price reductions, what does that actually mean in terms of incentivizing additional project origination and development opportunities. And the reality is, is that even with price compression of modules, there's only so much utilities are calling for right now because of how much was over procured. And so a lot of the demand for additional power, even with recognizing lower module pricing, is still calling for additional origination more so in that 2018 and especially 2019 to 2021 timeframe. Great. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, Corey. Sure, always glad to. And this is PV Magazine Live. We're at the Solar Power International Trade Show in Las Vegas.